In an effort to keep this simple, this episode is short. It's a quick one. Go back and listen to it again if you need to. But just to recap on my two suggestions of what I want you to write down. First, write down all of your responsibilities. Write down what goes on in your day-to-day, your week-to-week, your month-to-month in the context of answering this question. What is getting in my way of me reaching the fitness and nutrition goals that I have? Second, write down all the solutions that you believe could contribute to you actually reaching your fitness and nutrition goals. And then read the lists on each side, reflect on it for a few minutes, go through them, and figure out which one is not only the most impactful, but potentially the most important and the easiest for you to do. Let's link up with Krista on The Fix. She's a wellness coach with a focus on mental well-being and physical strength. Hello, hello, Fix listeners. Welcome to episode 55 of the Fix podcast. I am your host, Krista Huber, and we're flying solo today, guys. Back with a little solo episode after sprinkling in some new guests for you. Have a bunch of amazing interviews lined up for this month. And excited to get some new, fresh, real perspectives on the Fix podcast for 2022. But it's the first week of a brand new year, and I would be totally remiss if I didn't take the opportunity to talk about setting some goals, putting in new habits in place, and just setting yourself up to absolutely effing crush this new year. Now, a lot of this kind of conversation that I wanna talk through today came out of some themes that I've been noticing over new client consults, clients who are reconnecting with me or just kind of shifting their focus going into 2022 and deciding that now's the time that they want to enter a calorie deficit and want to focus on a fat loss phase. And I've had two chats over the last two or three days or so that have keep me keep me going back to the same exact theme of trying to do it all and trying to completely reinvent the wheel in every single aspect of your health and fitness life. And it's just too much. So the theme of today's episode is just going to be me talking about some of the things that I've noticed and some of the tips and tricks and approaches and just really thought process that I want to encourage you to put into place as you're thinking about what you hope to achieve over the course of the next month, the next six months, and of course throughout the entire year as a whole. My emphasis being on the entire year as a whole because I want anybody who understands what fixed coaching is all about to realize that we're not thinking about short term. We're thinking about way beyond the next six weeks, the next week, the next month. So had a chat with a potential client just the other day and a current client a few days before that talking about all of the things that they've started to notice over the last few years as they've gotten older that have changed for them or maybe there are certain habits that they do or things that they do that aren't in air quotes the best for them or the quote unquote healthiest for them that maybe when they were like 22 they could get away with um And that can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people, whether that's, you know, going out one night, having a couple extra drinks, maybe being a little bit hungover, but being able to bounce back a little bit more quickly, jumping into a workout the next day, or anything from just noticing that like eating certain foods affecting them a little bit more, whether that's because they start to really crave those foods and have a hard time saying no, limiting the intake of that food, and then realizing that it's kind of a rabbit hole that they can go down and and find themselves wanting to eat more and more of that one thing, even though they know it's not the best for them or doesn't really fit within their current meal plan. Other things that it could look like is just your attitude and approach towards working out. Maybe you fall out of your fitness routine and when you were 20 something, it was a lot easier to be able to jump right back into it and just rip off that Band-Aid and go to work. But as the years pass, it becomes a little bit more challenging. And that's not to blame it on your age. I think that a lot of it has to do with not accepting where you're at in your season of life. And that's going to be the first thing that I want to attack today. When we think about 
ideal times to try to start a diet. First of all, as I've said on this podcast many, many, many times and have had guests say on this podcast a million times over, there is no ideal time to try to lose weight. However, I think for as often as we say that, it is important to acknowledge that while there may not be an ideal time, there are definitely more opportune times in the sense that it might be a little bit easier. What do I mean by that? Well, I find that one of the biggest challenges that a lot of clients have is that they don't address the fact that sometimes their life is just really, really crazy and they put way too much pressure on themselves to try to achieve fat loss in one, a short period of time, or two, just in the midst of so much other chaos for them. And maybe it doesn't even need to be sheer chaos. Like maybe they're actually crushing it at work and their job is pretty demanding, but they feel like they're neglecting something about their own health and fitness. And then they all of a sudden decide that, oh, I'm going to start a diet right now. Sometimes that's not necessarily the best formula for your success. Or maybe they're in the process of moving or starting a new job or something changed and they feel like they don't have a lot of control over something. So sometimes they'll turn to a new meal plan or some sort of change in their routine when it comes to their health and fitness to be able to bring back some of that control. Now, in thinking that way, what I tend to see as that person who has the outside perspective and has this conversation often is that they don't recognize that maybe it's a little bit of a harder time to try to achieve the goals that they want. And that's not a bad thing. It just means they're going to really have to buckle down and they're going to really have to be serious about the compromises they're willing to make, the steps and actions that they're going to have to take on a regular basis to ensure that they're getting to the gym and hitting their workouts, they're recovering properly, they're hydrating, they're tracking their food if that's a part of their plan, they're hitting their macro goals if that's a part of their plan. Sometimes that takes a little more planning and effort when you have all of this other stuff circulating around in your life. That usually becomes a problem when people start to tell themselves this narrative of, well, I'm always really busy. I'm always this. I'm always that. So this just isn't going to work for me. Well, if you keep doing that as an aside, you're never going to find the right time to start. And that is why so many people constantly say there's never a good time to diet. There's never a good time to diet. But the lesson here is the fact that if you can put some context around where you're at in your current season, for example, let's actually use this. I want somebody who's listening to this, whether you're going to take out a piece of paper and a pen and write this down right now, or maybe you save the podcast for later and jump right back in here. If you happen to be outside on a walk, you can write in your notes, keep your phone out, pull out the notes app on your iPhone or whatever you're using, and just write down a couple things that I'm going to walk you through because I think this could be a really helpful exercise for someone to do if they're kind of feeling like they don't know where to start and they feel a little chaotic. Write down all the things that are going on in your life, whether they're things that you feel like are excuses that you often use for why it's not a good time to start a diet or just you kind of chronologically going through your day and thinking about all of the responsibilities you have, all of the stuff, for lack of a better word, that you have to get done, whether that's on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, every two weeks, in the month, however you can really map this out in your head. Now, the reason why I want you to do that is because I don't think that we can fully grasp all of the responsibilities that we have until we lay it out on paper. It it's really hard. It's the same exact reason why so many nutrition coaches out there, myself included, encourage people to spend some period of time tracking their food. It's the quote that I love. You can't manage, you can't fix what you don't measure. The same thing has to apply with all of the things that are going on in your schedule on a day-to-day basis. So that's kind of the first category I want you to go through. Think about this as columns on the left and the right. Whether you're thinking about it as your schedule or you're thinking about it as answering the question, what are the top 10 to 15 reasons why right now would not be a great time for me to focus on losing weight, for me to focus on committing to regular workouts, for me to focus on you fill in the blank, however you want to finish it, depending on where you're at with your nutrition and fitness goals. So you're going to write all those things down. I'll give you a couple examples. Maybe you have a long commute to work and you work a really long day. So you're 
day works out to where you get home at night and the last thing you want to do is think about meal prepping for tomorrow. So you'd write down something like, I don't have time to meal prep. And you know that meal prep is important. So you're going to write that down as your reason. Maybe you have a really stressful job in the sense that you don't have a lot of time to eat during the day when you're at work and you could write that down as a reason. Maybe you feel like you just haven't been in a gym routine and you don't know where to start. So just the overwhelm of the unknown and not knowing how to jump back into it. That could also be a reason. Like I said, other examples from the last few minutes, maybe you're moving soon and you feel like you just need to get through these next couple of weeks or these next couple of months. It could be anything, but think about the stories that you tell yourself on a regular basis as to why you don't think right now is a good time for you to get started. And I want you to write them down. And first and foremost, I do want you to acknowledge that just as much as they can sound like excuses, they're also not because they're going to be useful. And these air quote excuses are going to be useful because they're going to help you. And hopefully if you work with a coach, this will be easy, even easier of an activity for you to do because someone else can guide you through it. Figure out where to start first. And that leads me back to the whole inspiration for me jumping on and ranting about this for just a few minutes. I find, especially at the beginning of the year, that everyone wants to do a total 360. They wake up, whether that's on January 1, or maybe for a lot of people, it's the first Monday of the new year, or whenever they go back to work, if they were taking a few days off for the holidays. And all of a sudden, they're like, okay, it's January 3rd. It's Monday, January 3rd. Today's the day. I am going to wake up. I'm going to go to the gym. My alarm's going to go off at 530. I'm going to go to the gym. And then I'm also going to make sure I make time to meditate. I'm going to journal. I'm going to prep all my meals in advance. I'm going to start logging my food. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. And they list all of these amazing things that, hey, sound awesome. But newsflash people, I don't even do all those things every day on a regular basis. And most people don't. And yet we all sit here every single year. I know people, myself included, who have gone through periods where they'll do this without fail every single year. They wake up, there's something about a fresh start at a new on a new year or on a Monday or whatever it is for you that they wake up and they're like, okay, I'm gonna go do this all. A week goes by, all of a sudden, they only do about two of those things. Maybe the alarm starts turning into hitting that snooze button. 10 minutes later, turns into 10 minutes later, turns into you totally skip your workout and you're rushing out the door to either get to work or you're rushing to jump on to your computer if you work remotely. Maybe you prep your meals for half the week and all of a sudden Thursday, Friday rolls around. Oh, I have nothing left in the fridge. I'm just going to order food. Then what happens? You start on this slippery slope where you tell yourself, oh, this isn't going to work for me. This is too hard. I can't do this. I have too much going on. And then all those excuses that you listed in that first column on your piece of paper, all of a sudden become your reality. You affirm the narrative, but guess what? You just set yourself up for that failure. And I'm gonna say that again. You set yourself up for that failure. And that's a really hard thing to recognize. I mean, that when you say it that way, I feel like I sound harsh when I say it, but it's the truth. Why? The reason why is because you knew that you had all of those things going on. You knew deep down that you tended to use those things as excuses for why you couldn't start in prioritizing your health and wellness and putting yourself first. So you're essentially creating this feedback loop because you're putting yourself in a situation where it's going to be difficult for you to achieve what you want to achieve. So, okay, Krista, you just spent the last 10 minutes telling me that I'm gonna fail. That's not very reassuring. What are we gonna do about it? Here's what you're gonna do about it. In the column on the left or in the top of your paper and your notes on your phone, wherever you're writing this, you have your list of all the excuses, all the things, all the responsibilities that are getting in the way. To the right of that or underneath it, write down all of the goals that you do have, like literally do a dump of all the things that you want, just a total brain dump of all the things that you want to achieve, that you want to put into your routine. Whether that's some of the examples I was rattling off, like you're getting into meditating, getting outside for a walk, going to the gym X number of times a week. Try to be specific, that is important. Tracking your food, 
committing to some sort of meal plan, whatever it is, write down all of those things. Now that you have those two things mapped out side by side on this piece of paper, I want you to take inventory of them, look at your responsibilities, look at all the things that are getting in the way, and then look at all the things that you want to accomplish. We should all come to terms with the fact that it is totally crazy to try and believe that you are going to accomplish all of those things all at once. Instead, go back through that second list, look at the things you want to achieve, and think about the ones that are the most important to you. That's one way of looking at it. So either the most important to you and rank them. Go through them and ask yourself, if I could just address one of these things, which one do I feel is the most important to me? Now, the second way you can approach it is to ask yourself, which one of these things, of these goals or these tasks, activities that I want to accomplish on a regular basis, a weekly basis, monthly basis, daily, whatever, is going to be the most impactful for me in achieving the outcome that I want. And let's say that that outcome that you want is to lose weight. Pick the thing, just one. And this is the hard part because here's the other piece that I don't think enough people acknowledge on a regular basis. It's really not a matter of finding this recipe of seven different things and seven different activities, approaches, tasks, whatever the hell you want to call them. That is the secret sauce that you're missing to why you can't achieve your goals. It's actually completely counterintuitive to the problem. The problem is that you're trying to do too many things at once. And you're not convinced that just trying one singular thing will be enough for you to be able to get where you want to go. But I think most people, if they really think about it and they look at some of the, the different diets or approaches they've tried in the past, they'd recognize they've never actually just tried one thing, one very basic thing. It can be as simple as committing to getting eight hours of sleep every single night. It can be as simple as, hey, I don't track my food at all, so my goal for this next month is gonna be to track my food three days a week. We think that's too basic. And we think because it's way too basic, there's no way it's going to get us to, want, to where we want to go. We also are impatient. And so we're convinced that if we try to change everything overnight and do that complete 360 and wake up a brand new person who puts their health and wellness above all else, that that's what's going to get us to where we want to go as quickly as possible. But again, it's actually the reason that we burn out as quickly as possible in trying to make that happen and then convincing ourselves that it's too hard. So instead, I want you to take that list, that second list of what you hope to accomplish and figure out which of the ones is the big rock, which is the one that's going to move the needle the most for you. Now, this is also a point where people probably get stuck because chances are you scroll social media, you talk to your friends, and they're all telling you all different things. They're like, well, I tried this diet and this worked really well for me. Or my friend did this, my cousin did that. So-and-so ordered meal prep from this company or this person tried intermittent fasting, whatever it is. And now you're confused. So you're confused because you see all these different approaches being pitched at you on a daily basis. You have all these different people trying to tell you that it worked for this person, it worked for that person. And you don't actually know what's going to move the needle. If you were that person, I cannot stress enough how important it is to consider working with a coach. The only way you are going to figure out what is the most important is by talking to somebody who knows something about it. It's as simple as that. And by talking to somebody who chances are has been the person that I'm describing, who's tried all the different things to no avail and was just like, I'm instead of finally throwing my hands up in the air, I'm going to do something about this and I'm going to figure this out because most of the coaches that I know, myself included, I got into this space because I was at a point where I was frustrated and I was like, this doesn't make sense. I'm trying so hard in the gym in this area and I feel like my physique doesn't match up. There's something I have to be missing. And I wasn't satisfied with being told that I just wasn't gonna figure it out. So I investigated it, I worked with a coach myself and I loved that experience so much that it influenced my decision to also now be in this space. So if you really think about it, if you sit down and you ask yourself, what is the one thing that I should address first and you can't answer that question, 
I urge you to consider talking to someone. I personally do free consultations for your first call. If you're just looking to figure out and kind of map out where you should start first, whether we continue to work together or not, I'd be more than happy to have that conversation with you. The other piece of it, going back to what I mentioned about usually trying five or six different things and never committing to just the one thing, that's an approach that you can take to get yourself started. Pick the one thing because chances are all of them are gonna move the needle in some way and just go for it for one or two weeks and get really, really good at that one thing. Something I like to explain to all of the Fitness Fix clients is we gotta walk before we can run. And again, we're usually impatient and we really wanna see our results quickly. And for some reason, we equate quickly to doing it all. And I think it's kind of the same parallel that we see today in our world of, oh, being busy and being really, having a lot going on and being pulled in a million directions means that I'm a successful person. It's, it's kind of the same analogy. It's like this idea that, well, if you try to do a lot of the things because you're doing all of the things, then you're just definitely more high achieving. And in the case of your fitness and wellness, that's going to equal fat loss, transformation, any of the above. And it doesn't really work like that. So in an effort to keep this simple, this episode is short. It's a quick one. Go back and listen to it again if you need to. But just to recap on my two suggestions of what I want you to write down. First, write down all of your responsibilities. Write down what goes on in your day-to-day, -day, your week-to-week, -week, your month-to-month -month in the context of answering this question. What is getting in my way of me reaching the fitness and nutrition goals that I have? Second, write down all the solutions that you believe could contribute to you actually reaching your fitness and nutrition goals. And then read the lists on each side, reflect on it for a few minutes, go through them, and figure out which one is not only the most impactful, but potentially the most important and the easiest for you to do. If you're somebody who has never done anything with their nutrition before, that might not be that easy for you. The idea of tracking your food might be very overwhelming. If you're someone who has tracked their food before, but every Friday rolls around and you tend to be like, eh, screw it, I'm just gonna eat whatever I want, start by walking, not running. All you gotta do is commit to tracking your food every Saturday for the next month and see what kind of information you get off that. And as soon as you commit to every Saturday, we're gonna layer it on from there. We're gonna go from every Saturday to every Friday and Saturday. Now, all of a sudden, we have great information for us to work off of and identify what can we approve upon from there. Try it out. Let me know what you think. Would love some feedback on this activity. If anybody's listened to this and they're like, hey, I need some help doing that, you know where to find me. Still accepting new clients for the next six months. Would love to work with you in helping you achieve whatever goals you have on your horizon in 2022. They might not even be expressly fitness and nutrition related. Sometimes it's just a, manage, a matter of better time management and all of a sudden it opens up these new doors for you to have more opportunity to create the time for what you ultimately want to do. So maybe we just need to work on redesigning your schedule. And that's a conversation I would love to have with you. So hit me up, shoot me a DM at the Krista Huber. If you found this episode helpful, you guys know the drill. Share it with one of your friends. Maybe you need to do this activity with someone else, whether that's a family member, someone in your house, significant other, push them to do it with you. Maybe having someone else give you that feedback on your list, just like I suggested as with a coach, you could do the same thing with someone in your life who's a part of your support team, who's in your corner. Compare the results, work through it together, figure out how you can help each other, and that's how we'll all get started on this journey, little by little. As always, wherever you are listening from, have a wonderful rest of your day.